Hello Jigs and Ghouls, I kept uh, hearing reviews about this book on YouTube, how this one, Boy's Life by Robert McCammon, was way way better, it was his best book, way way better than Swan Song, and believe me I have read Swan Song, it was a couple of years ago, it was definitely one of my favorite reads of that year, it was a solid 5 star book, and I was like, there's no way in hell this book is better than Swan Song. Yeah, I read it this summer and tell you what, I want my crow to be medium rare. Thank you. What is Boy's Life by Robert McCammon? That's a tough call. Uh, the best way I can describe this book is that it's, uh, it's Ray Bradbury writing Twin Peaks. It was published back in 1991, so yes, definitely. Twin Peaks was at its peak back then, or maybe a fond memory, I'm not quite sure, I can't remember when it came out, um, but yeah, I can just picture the similarity that it's about a boy growing up in a small town. So our protagonist is Corey, who wants to be a writer, and when he is 12 years old, he and his father, who is a milkman, uh, they go out to his route and they see a car falling into a lake and there is a tied a naked man uh, on the wheel of the car so it's a murder but because the lake is very deep, it was an old quarry that um, got filled with water and it's very deep there is no way for the police to take out the car and the body and also nobody's missing so they witness a murder but nobody is investigating the murder because the small town and the sheriff is too busy this murder case is just there to kickstart the events of the book, but basically it turns out to be an arc to tie things together to help us explore a year in the life of Corey and uh, this wonderful strange town he is in. This town is in Alabama and there is a nearby town with uh, the people of color and there there is this uh, woman the lady who is uh, taking care of everybody and she's like uh, voodooites and there is also a gang of um, bootleggers bootleggers uh, moonshiners that is uh, reportedly controlling the town and then we have Cory who is seeing certain strange things in this town and there's a lot of uh, magical, ele magical elements in this town like um, there is a scene where uh, some children are flying because it's the ritual of sorts there is magic in this town it's not a horror novel it's more like dark fantasy magical realism uh, the writing is just uh, very last it reminds me of ray bradbury the way everything gets emotive and basically every chapter of this book is like a short story it's like a standalone short story that ties to other chapters and it's sort of like a, a patchwork of short stories coming together around Corey and his friends, his parents, his family, the, fr the parents of his uh, friends, the many colorful characters they meet throughout, and of course, yes, there is this reoccurring murder that is haunting both Corey and his father, who actually dived in and saw the dead man, and um, there's a lot of things happening, uh, so it's a book worth exploring. Since every chapter is sort of like a short story of its own and they're tied together there are a lot of emotional payoffs throughout the book every chapter ends in a way that it gives you the experience of having read a complete story or in a long series of stories so that means that there are a lot of shifts in mood in uh, resonance in um, the way you feel and also a lot of themes being introduced in a way that makes sense, it doesn't feel alien. You can have a chapter about, again, children flying some way, and I'm not sure if it's metaphorical or literal in this uh, book, and then you can have a murder investigation, you can have uh, ghostly apparitions, you can have um, a flood, in the community of um, the people of color and uh, something that shouldn't pop up popping up there and um, 
yes, it all ties to the mystery of the murder because Corey is trying to find out the killer so that his father is not haunted by the dead man, but um, it goes in and out of the plot. It's, it's sort of like um, tying things together in this book. So yeah, it feels very rich and uh, there are certain parts that are very moving. It's a coming of age story. So there are a lot of themes of coming of age and coming to terms with certain events and uh, it's a very rich book. I think that, okay, Robert McCammon has a great writing style, he is a master of uh, his uh, pen and he can give a very rich experience. Here he's more um, lyrical, there is this magic element of Ray Bradbury's writing in this book, it's a tribute to him and actually at some point Corey is reading the Marshall Chronicles so yes, he is like, um, he's my hero sort of and he also in the epilogue of this book also thanks uh, Rod Sterling for Twilight Zone so it's sort of like um, a series of short stories happening to the same people and the way some of these short stories are connected, how some arcs begin in certain chapters and pay off later, how the mystery of the murder is building with a lot of red herrings and um, false aspects, and the way it's finally resolved, which again is very pulpy, the explanation of why the murder happens is really um, the last card of pulpy um, weird fiction from the 50s to come in because it's taking place in 1960 I believe um, in, this, in the town of Zephyr in uh, 1964, 1965, spring to spring uh, so it's quite interesting um, and yes, he Corey is at the age of 12 so he is turning from a boy into a man and the way yeah I mean Listen, I cannot sell you this book because you have to read it to understand. It's great. It's one of the best books I've ever read. It's definitely my top uh, coming of age uh, sort of horror book. It's not horror though. I mean, his other works are thriller or horror books. This one is a dark fantasy, but who cares? It's a magical book. And yeah, I enjoyed reading it. Yeah, I assumed I would read it in two days like I did in with Swan Song, which is far chunkier. Uh, this one is only 500 pages long, the other one was 900 pages long, so I read in three days, so I assumed, oh yes, it's Robert McCammon, I love his books, I'll probably chew through this like it's um, nothing, but no, I took my time reading it because I had to go slow for it, to enjoy it, to internalize what I was reading and how this patch word of a story works and uh, yeah, I just loved it and I hope you love it too, you have to read this one regardless of what, if you're into horror or fantasy you should definitely give it a read, I mean, uh, it was amazing if you've read this book, I'd love to hear your opinion leave a comment below and as always Thank you for watching and stay spooky!